Welcome to EuroPCR Paris 23. My name is Lawrence Raber, Director of the Catheterization Laboratory at Bern University Hospital, Switzerland, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Niels von Rooyen, who is a full professor of cardiology and the chairman at the University of Radboud in Nijmegen, the Netherlands. Welcome. We're going to discuss today a very much emerging topic, the vulnerable plaque, and specifically a trial that you conducted throughout the last year, the Pectus trial. Niels, can you tell me why are vulnerable plaques relevant to be detected and what could we potentially make with those findings? Yes, thanks very much, uh, Lawrence, for uh, providing me the opportunity uh, to, to show something of the, uh, the Pectus uh, Ops uh, trial on this, uh, this podium. Um, so, with regard to your question, why uh, should we uh, go after these uh, potential vulnerable plaques? I think what is important to realize that in patients with uh, FFR negative uh, lesions, so lesions that we leave alone, that we defer, that the, the outcome is often not, not as good as we believe it is. So if you look at the data, for example, after two years, event rates, especially in patients with acute coronary syndrome, so patients with, uh, at the index event, a STEMI or a non-STEMI, the event rate at two years can be as high as 25%. Sure. If you then go beyond that point, five years, 10 years, uh, naturally uh, those numbers uh, go even higher, up to 50%. And uh, for, for, for that, I think we really have to do a better job. We have to uh, find means and methods to identify those high-risk patients to not only provide good care in the cat lab or in the, the 30 days thereafter, but really lifelong uh, treatment. Also because that's why the surgeons uh, still claim, can claim, that uh, in many patients they do a better job because of the long-term uh, outcome results. So that's why I think we have to go beyond just the question whether or not we should stand a lesion, that's where FFR is perfect for, but we also have to, uh, to go beyond and try to, to nail down those high-risk patients and provide them better treatment. Sure, very important points. Yeah. So you put a lot of work uh, throughout the last years into the trial. Can you tell us uh, more about uh, the design of this trial? Yes, sure. So um, uh, the, the, the Pectus trial was a prospectively uh, designed uh, trial. Uh, patients uh, uh, were el eligible if they uh, presented with a, a STEMI or a non-STEMI. They uh, had a, a successful uh, primary PCI and they also needed to have a uh, non culprit lesion of intermediate severity, angiographic stenosis severity between 30 and 80 percent. Uh, then, uh, according to guidelines, uh, those uh, lesions were interrogated by FFR, and if the FFR was negative, so above uh, 0.80, then uh, they were uh, uh, enrolled in the study, so informed consent was, uh, was uh, retrieved and after informed consent, then uh, the OCT was performed. OCT was performed, uh, we, um, we had a, uh, a, a power calculation sample size of 438 patients. So we did OCT in 438 patients, and uh, that led to a, a number of patients uh, uh, available for analysis of 420, which was good because we anticipated an attrition rate of 10%, but this was only like three or 4%. So a large number of uh, pullbacks, 500 uh, pullbacks. And then we divided uh, the patients in patients that showed high risk features in their non corporate lesion versus patients that didn't. And then uh, what we presented here at PCR are the, the primary outcome results. So follow up at two years but follow-up will be extended up till five years. I see. And what were the findings? Um, the findings uh, were that even uh, in patients with FFR negative lesions, the use of OCT can identify patients at increased risk. So what we found was a, um, an, an adverse event rate, so the primary outcome was, was MACE, so uh, cardiac death, uh, unplanned revascularization, or spontaneous MI. And adverse events were, um, uh, or occurred in about 8%, 
in patients without uh, uh, high-risk features versus 15 percent, so almost doubling in the patients uh, with uh, high-risk features on the OCT. That's quite a difference. Can I ask you about the criteria that you used uh, to detect uh, the vulnerable plaque by optical coherence tomography? Yeah, so what we were looking at at the lipid, gar lipid arc, so lipid arc uh, more than 90 degrees, uh, then uh, uh, presence of a uh, thick fast, so uh, fibrous cap uh, less than uh, 65 uh, micrometers, uh, uh, or the presence of a plaque rupture or plaque thrombus. So two two out of those three, then, uh, the, the, then we counted them as high-risk features. Sure, and how frequent were uh, those patients who harbored uh, such uh, vulnerable Very plaques? important question, uh, about one-third of the patients. Okay. So one-third of the patient uh, had these characteristics, two th so at least one uh, non corporate lesion with these characteristics. 66% uh, did not harbor these, uh, and that's, I think that's important because if it was close to 10% or close to 90% also doesn't make sense, but it is really something where you can, uh, well, introduce uh, a really patient-tailored uh, uh, treatment. Absolutely. So an important uh, subgroup of patients that harbor vulnerable substrate yes. in the uh, non-infarct-related vessel. Yeah. And you obviously have proven that, first of all, you can identify them in clinical routine and uh, that they associate with uh, future outcomes. Yeah. Congratulations to a very well-performed uh, trial. Thank you very much uh, for that. Um, but maybe now that we're here, uh, I can uh, make use of the opportunity and ask you a question because you're a very well-known expert in the field and uh, have performed many clinical trials yourself and are also very knowledgeable about other ongoing trials. So what is your perspective on the field and where do we go, where should we go? I mean, your trial uh, nicely confirmed previous trials that used other techniques like near-infrared spectroscopy that clearly proved that these vulnerable plaques associate with a uh, higher maze rate. Now, the next question, obviously, is how to treat them. Mm -hmm. And basically, there are two concepts. There is a pharmacological concept uh, to treat those or a mechanical. And, of course, we are very familiar with the mechanical concept. We like yeah. to uh, provide an immediate uh, uh, treatment. But let me start with the pharmacological ones, because, of course, you could also argue that vulnerable plaques the presence of vulnerable plaque also increased the patient level risk and not only the lesion level and therefore a, a pharmacological intervention may be uh, uh, effective and in this regard there were recently two studies the Huygens and the Pacman IMI that have shown that intensive LDL lowering really stabilizes and regresses uh, these plaques the cap gets uh, thicker on average uh, uh, 60 micrometer um, and the um, uh, lipid content is decreasing and the plaque per is shrinking. So uh, pharmacological intervention and specifically um, intensive LDL lowering does work. On the other hand, the outstanding question is whether interventional treatment, uh, stenting or yep. drug eluting balloons uh, whatsoever would work. And uh, currently there are uh, four randomized controlled wow. trials, including a totality of almost 5,000 patients that uh, look at different patients, two of them in stable, two of them in the non-culprit lesions of uh, ACS patients, but they all have in common, they compare a active mechanical treatment of non-obstructive vulnerable plaque versus optical medical therapy and in two of them um, this uh, strategy is also compared with a FFR based strategy so basically you say we yeah. just treat um, those lesions that induce ischemia versus those that show uh, vulnerability uh, characteristics and of course this is an, a very relevant uh, question considering the uh, analysis the sub-analysis we have from the ischemia trial yeah. where the degree of ischemia did not really correlate with the outcomes but the burden of disease mm. did so uh, there will be much to be learned throughout the next years and I believe indeed uh, this is a very, very important topic and congratulations again mm -hmm. on the well-conducted PECTUS trial. Looking forward to see it in print. Thank you very much.